brown envelope comes and you read it and within two weeks you had to go. That's a the mother was a bit worried, I think, at the time, but they soon get over it when, when you know that you're getting on all right. But as I say, I'd never been away from home, only up to the farm for the short holidays and the summer school holidays. That's a I suppose the furthest you went to was like uh, Blackpool, um, Skegness, Yarmouth, places like that. I think we did venture once up into Scotland for a brief period uh, to Jean's relatives. Uh, while we were courting, but that's as far as we've ever been. We've never been abroad at all. We were expecting to go anyway. My brothers had, had, had gone, and the, all the my friends here were usually older than me, with the exception of one, I think, and they'd gone. So it, we was left. You know, when it came to your turn, you just had to go. We did have a choice because. Uh, I could have refused and then gone down the mines in what they call the Bevin Boys days where we had to do it or if I refused that as well I could have spent my time in prison so uh, the alternative was to do a job towel and do my national service. Tell the truth we thought we'd missed it because we signed when we was 18 as you were obliged to do <coughs> and then we heard nothing at all and this gave us the false impression that we'd missed it. And then along came the brown envelope through the door and uh, when I was 20 and it says we want you to go and join the army. You had to notify the company and show them the documentation that you received from the government that you were being called up. So there's all the paperwork and necessary details were taken care of. Um, but nothing at all. You know, you just told your sweetheart or your wife or your mum or your dad that you were being called up and that was it. Not a lot of things to wind up really, not when you're 18 and you have to give your next of kin obviously. That's a, in my case it was my mother and father, so... And that was about it, you just packed your bag and went. I met Ray at the factory where we both worked. Ray was in the engineering side of things and I was in the wages office. And that would be in about 1958. And that would be about two years before he went into national service. In the wages office, the letters would come in sort of weekly and they would report that they'd got to leave their job for two years. And likewise, there'd be some coming back who were reporting back for work. You, you all knew it was going to happen, so um, the letter came and um, you just went forward and you knew they were going. You knew that two years would come and go quite quickly. There was no immediate reaction at all. I think the fact was, you've got to go, you've got to go. And that, that was it. You know, the, the money, uh, they certainly knew that they, they wouldn't be getting the same amount of money coming in. Um, that was very reduced compared to what you were earning in the factories. I think I were on somewhere around about 20 odd pound a week. And suddenly you go down to two pound a week. That's army pay. Pay as the an electrician, if I can remember correctly, was £21.12 shilling a week without overtime. When I was uh, called up into the army, I got £1.12 shillings and six pence. The first week I had for ar army pay was five shillings. That is about uh, 26 pence now. Um, I was earning more than that, obviously, but I had to pay at home uh, my living and I also had to buy my own clothes and whatnot out of the money I was earning in civilian street. But in the army, the five shillings was just, uh, it was just spending money. Well, you had to go for your medical first, which was the day before my 18th birthday for me. Coventry, and I'd, I'd never been, I didn't know Coventry at all. I went there on the bus, which is another thing, we hadn't used corporation buses only half a dozen times in my life. <laughs> the medical took place down uh, Tamworth Road in Coventry, and uh, I don't know what the name of the place is now, if it's, even if it's still there, uh, the building, but uh, you were given uh, a letter that came through the door uh, to attend this particular uh, surgery, whatever it was, and uh, you had a long line of doctors in there. 
and they started from top to toe. The usual thing, cough, <coughs> you're all right, you're, you're, you're okay. We've realised that the doctors take doing the medical were in a very difficult position because there were all these um, bolshy young doctors desperately trying to find something to avoid the army. <laughs> so um, uh, we, looked, we knew, knew the difficult position they were in and um, accepted it again. It was quite fun really. They're in a boat which we wouldn't have liked to have been in, sort of thing, you know. He had a complete physical medical, which was heart, lungs, make sure you've got all your the credentials that men should have. They didn't pass me grade one at the medical board. I had to see a specialist at George Elliot, which was the nearest hospital. And after waiting about three hours to see the specialist, he turned around and told me I was A1 and stopped smoking woodbines. In August of 47, um, I was called up for the medical in Birmingham and uh, fortunately or unfortunately I was past A1. And then in December, or rather the end of, uh, end of November, um, <clears throat> I received the notice, you know, you are called up for the army, please report to Broadbrook Barracks. Well, you had to report to a certain place and uh, when you go there, there's a, an, a, a line of, again, officers, um, but they were from different things. They were not just the army, there was the uh, Air Force and there was the Navy and whatever, but mainly it was the army that they were looking for. And uh, when you went before the major who were there or the whoever he was, commandant, um, he just asked you what uh, you did in civilian life and that they wanted you in the army and uh, what would you like to go in? And I said, well, I'd like to continue my engineering. Oh, well, we don't need no engineers. So you're going to be a medic. And from then on, medical corps. And that was it.